Hi, George here. And today I'll be showing you how you can make a soft edge vignette using any shape that you want. I'm using a snowflake here on this one. But we'll do a couple of shapes so you can see how this whole process works. And we'll start off with the original file. Let's just get this out of the way. Here we go. The first thing I want to do here is just to crop this down to a square shape. So we'll go over here and grab the crop tool right here. And I have this set at five by five inches, which is square. And there's our basic crop. Let's just bring this over now so that her face is centered to the right. So you get the centering on the face and hands right there. I think that's about where we need to be. And hit the green check mark for OK. And there we go. There's our image cropped down to a basic square shape. I'm now going to make a copy of this layer. So right click on background and let's just duplicate that layer. I always do this just as a safety. We're doing a couple things in here. First one is go over here to the shapes. Now this is going to look like that in your list of tools. The rectangle shape, come down to the options and click on the one just to the left of that. And that one is the custom shape tool. And there are a lot of shapes in here. Yours will be set at the default to begin with, which is just like this. There's a few good shapes in here. Let's just do the heart. Start off with this one. And you want this set at unconstrained. Pulling from the center helps make sure that this checkbox is checked. Black is fine on your color. Don't change your color, doesn't matter. And I'll come into about the center of the picture right here and I'll drag this out. Now, I know it's because it's unconstrained, I can pull like that and change my shape. That's why I have a nice shape in here about that big. I have my opacity set down here to 53%, just so that I can move things around for positioning. I'll just change my tool here, with the move tool, and we'll do that. You know, it's kind of hard to see, but there are bounding boxes in there. You can kind of see them here. Let me come in and we'll do one more step at this point to make this easier to see. We'll need this anyway, which is a white layer above this layer. Let's go to the background, click on new layer. Let's just fill that layer with white. There we go. And now if I hide this, you can see the bounding box in here. If I click on that, there's our control handles. So if I grab the control handle, I can change the shape a bit here just by Adjusting that, I think that's a better looking shape for that heart kind of in here. Hit the green check mark. We'll bring back in our photo layer. And we can now find a good placement for that heart. Be right about in here. Looks pretty good. I'm trying to be even left to right on this. We can move the girl around in just a minute. Now, what you need to do is to take the background copy layer here, drag it above that shape layer. There we go. Now, right click where it says background copy and come down and create a clipping mask. What that does is it puts the girl inside of that shape. Let's come down to the shape now, put this back up to 100%. There we go. So it's now inside. And because it's inside, I can be on this layer up here and actually move that image around inside until I get just the positioning that I want. So that's real nice. Now, this is a hard edge shape in here. And you can do this with any of these hard edge shapes. We're going to change this now and make this into a soft edge vignette. So for that, it's come down here where it says shape one. I'll right click on this and duplicate that layer. We're going to lose that clipping mask in a second. That's okay there. We just lost that. We'll bring that back in again. I'll hide this one. That's my safety with the hard edge, just in case I want to go back and try again. I always like making safety layers. Okay, back up to this layer. And above that is our background copy. Let's go ahead, right click and put that back into that clipping mask. There we go. Now come down to our copy of our shape layer here. That's the one that we're seeing and go up to Filter, come down to Blur and Gaussian Blur, and just click on Rasterize. And there's a soft edge. We can now control the soft edge with our slider control here. I can make it as soft as I want, like that. Or I can bring it down and make it a bit harder. It's up to you just how soft or hard you want to have that edge in there. Now, keep in mind, if you go too far, you're going to begin seeing the edges over here of your picture. That's because that's where the edge of the actual picture is in behind. I can move the picture over to solve that a little bit, but that's too soft anyway. You can't see anything. So you want to be down pretty close to a hard edge. You might want to come to the left and then just slowly pull it in towards the right in little steps until you get just enough of a softening on that edge for the effect that you're looking for. And I think that looks pretty good. She's okay. Let's just solve this one little bit right here. You can see the little line right in, right into where the edge of this line is. That edge is this layer up here. I'm going to turn off the auto select layer so you can see that better. There we go. That little edge right here, that's because that's the edge of that picture up here. 
So to fix that, I'll need to extend this picture out just a little bit that direction. The easiest thing to do is just to grab the control handle here and stretch the picture just enough so it fits that side left to right. And there we go, that solves that. Okay, let's now do the same trick here. We'll find that snowflake. So you can see how you can do this with different shapes. I'm gonna release this clipping mask up here. Let's hide that layer. And I'll hide that layer just for a moment. Let's come back over here. I'll put my colors back to black and white like that with black in front, back to our shapes. And now here is that snowflake. But if you go up here to default, click on that, click on all elements shapes. See, there are just tons and tons and tons of shapes in here that you can actually choose from to do this. Now, things that are too detailed like this are not going to work because we're softening things out. Anything with too much detail like this, anything with little sharp spiky things, that's gonna get fuzzed out and that's not gonna work. You wanna have larger, more solid shapes for this. Like the heart was pretty good. These would not work in here at all. The thicker arrows would work. These kind of shapes would work. So you want the big, thick shapes to make this work out properly. Okay, I'll scroll down and we'll find that snowflake, which is just down just a little bit in here. You see how many shapes are actually available here. These fruit shapes would work, except these stems would disappear. These are snowflakes. This one will not work at all. This one maybe, that one not really, but this works. There's a nice large area in the middle. And again, I'm drawing from center and I'll just come about center. And I'll pull this shape out like this and I'll adjust it. So it fits properly. It looks like right around here. If you hold the shift key down, it's going to be coming in proportional. And I'll bring that over until it's about centered, which is right here. Again, I'll change my opacity here up to 100%. Let's now go back up here to our background copy, right click and create clipping mask. Puts her inside, back to our shape layer, and we'll blur that out. But before I do that, let's make a copy of this, right click and duplicate layer, hide the original. Let's go back up here and make this back into a clipping mask again. There we go. The reason why I'm making this is because the blurring is permanent. You can't change that blur once you've applied that blur. So in order to have that flexibility to go back and do it again, you wanna have your backup layer on that. Okay, let's go ahead, we'll do our blur in here. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur, rasterize. And I'll bring it down to sharp and then I'll slowly pull this up until I have the right amount of blur. What I want in here is the point at which I still see this as being a snowflake, but I've softened the edges down for that nice soft look. So someplace right around in here, I think, works out pretty well. And there we go. A nice bit about this is that she is in focus and that automatically puts that further into the background because it's more blurred out. And it gives you that nice, really focused in effect here on the foreground and on the face because the background is blurred along the edges. If you wanna learn more about working with Photoshop Elements, Take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. There's a link for that right down there in the description. Make sure you click on like and hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time.